These opinions do not constitute professional advice and should not be interpreted as a recommendation for any specific treatment plan, product, service, or course of action. Starting today, capacity limits have been lifted for some Ontario venues, including movie theaters, concerts, and sporting events. We'll have more on this coming up. It's Toronto Vax Giving this weekend, which means COVID-19. Team vaccine clinics will be set up in areas with low inoculation rates. We'll have all those details straight ahead. And don't forget your umbrella. We're in for a soggy morning. Showers are in the forecast, not only for today, but for tomorrow as well. I'll have your complete forecast in moments. It is 7 o'clock, sitting at 18 degrees, but already feeling more like 24 degrees outside from 299 Queen Street West. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Good morning and happy Saturday. I'm Beatrice Faisman. Capacity limits are being lifted for some Ontario venues where proof of vaccination is required. Cinemas, theatres, concerts and sports venues, as well as car and horse racing tracks, are allowed to open at full capacity as of this morning. The province says there have been few outbreaks in the selected settings and most other public health measures remain in place. Physical distancing requirements are also being lifted with some exceptions like indoor meeting and event spaces. Capacity rules are still in effect though at gyms and at restaurants. The announcement comes as the NHL and the NBA seasons quickly approach. MLSE confirming to CP24 that beginning with the Leafs home opener, which will happen right there at the Scotiabank Arena on Wednesday, October 13th, all events at Scotiabank Arena will be at full capacity. The Raptors play their home opener a week later. The Leafs wrap up their preseason. Tonight against the Senators. Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment issuing this statement saying we are overjoyed to see this day arrive when we are able to welcome a full venue to cheer on the Maple Leafs and Raptors. We recognize there will continue to be much work to do together to ensure the safest environment possible for every event attendee and our community. Today though is an exciting day for our teams, our fans and our community and we look forward to a safe and enjoyable season. The lifting of capacity limits comes in time for the Argos game in Hamilton on Monday. The Ticats sweeting full capacity. Tim Hortons Field increases to full capacity in accordance with provincial guidelines. Let's pack the house for Monday's game versus the Argos. Woodbine Entertainment CEO Jim Lawson talked to CP24 about the impact of capacity limit changes. What it means for Woodbine is is that we will have full dining capacity and our simulcast areas that we use that we would typically have more than a thousand people we won't have that limit anymore but we'll be governed of course by the double vaccination as i said so it will be good for business and we'll just have to work through the logistics but when it comes to capacity limits in bars and restaurants, Charles Caboose, he's the founder and the CEO of Inc. Entertainment, owning some 23 establishments here in the city. He says a big problem, a big part of the problem is simply finding staff. He's blaming federal benefits, which started during the pandemic. As it is now, we're running most of the restaurants and bars at 60, 70 percent capacity, not for anything other than the fact that we are short staffed and people just are not interested in coming back. The government has made it way too is easy. It's become more of a political uh, issue and it's I Today, I had a meeting with my HR director, and I can hire in the next 24 hours 311 people that are badly needed in our restaurants and bars.
As we've been telling you, capacity limits, they remain in place for bars and restaurants, and the Canadian Federation of Independent Business says that's hurting its members. Capacity limits are really hurting our members. Um, and uh, for as long as those capacity limits uh, are imposed on businesses, um, As I said at the beginning, uh, federal programs to help pay wages of uh, employees on the payroll and rent um, are, uh, are needed. Selena Blanchard, she's the owner of the Lambretta Pizzeria in Roncesvalles. She reacted to restaurants not being included on the province's list. It's hard to hear that, you know, the sports venues are allowed to serve uh, alcohol and food and sit next to strangers. Meanwhile, restaurants are not allowed to have uh, their families and their friends next to each other um, and, are, you know, for more capacity. I mean, it should be should be able to to increase it at all levels. Restaurants Canada says it is. disappointed that the food service industry was left out of yesterday's announcement. A statement from the organization's president and CEO reads in part, we have borne the expenses of PPE and safety protocols as well as the recent introduction of the vaccine passport system despite historic revenue losses. The industry has done everything asked of us and yet we continue to be singled out. The Ontario Hockey League is thanking the Ford government, meanwhile, for lifting capacity limits. The league says its 17 Ontario-based teams will have 100% capacity starting tomorrow for fully vaccinated crowds. There are seven... ...games in the OHL scheduled tomorrow. The new junior season, it starts on Thursday. Meanwhile, there is cautious optimism from federal health officials as they provided their latest COVID-19 projections. Current case numbers are not nearly as high as was previously projected. There has been an average of more than 3,700 new daily cases reported across Canada this week. This compares to the more than 8,500 daily cases the country initially projected to hit by mid-September. Canada's top doctor, Theresa Tam, says cases are not growing nearly as fast as previously predicted. Since the previous modelling update, the average daily case counts have increased, but at a slower pace than had been pre forecasted last month. Public health measures reapplied in late August and September to slow the acceleration of the Delta variant transmission have helped to bend the curve, with daily cases leveling off in recent weeks at the national level. Dr. Tam urges Canadians to follow their local public health measures over the Thanksgiving long weekend, including avoiding large gatherings and ensuring all guests are vaccinated. It's Vaxgiving this weekend here in the city of Toronto. 18 mobile COVID-19 vaccine clinics will focus their efforts on areas with low inoculation rates, offering both first and second. Doses. City officials are encouraging people to get their first shots this weekend so that they'll be fully vaccinated in time for the December holiday season. Several mobile clinics will also run next week. For a complete list of Vaxgiving clinics, you can go to our website, cp24.com. Peel Public Health says there has been a COVID-19 exposure linked to wedding events in Mississauga. Officials are urging anyone who attended the Sri Guru Singh Sabha Malton on October 3rd between 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. to get tested for COVID-19 immediately. Attendees who are not fully vaccinated must also self-isolate until they receive a negative test result. Those who are fully vaccinated and don't have any symptoms will not need to isolate, but should still practice public health measures and limit their contacts. 
The Ontario Hospital Association is offering its thanks to hospital and healthcare workers for all they've done through the pandemic. The association tweeting a video with people expressing their gratitude. I want you to know how much I appreciate it. Thank you all the staff for helping me at the hospital. I'd like to thank the hospital staff for their tireless service to the people. I wish I could give you all a great big hug. You deserve so much. Thank you all very, very much. And just let you know, we're continuing to think about you as the days go on as well. This video released on the same day, Ontario's science advisory table says health worker burnout has reached levels that pose a threat to maintaining a functioning workforce. In a new research brief, the group calls for organizational responses to mitigate the problem that's expected to continue through the pandemic and beyond. It says organizations should work to ensure adequate staffing, reduce overtime and avoid deploying staff to areas where they lack training. It also recommends bringing in more new graduates and retaining current staff with financial compensation and building supportive workplaces. A new study suggests children are almost as likely to get COVID-19 as adults. The study, which was published in the journal JAMA Pediatrics, found children shared similar risks as adults of becoming infected, but kids only had symptoms about half the time. Researchers found 52% of children younger than four were asymptomatic, followed by 40% of those ages 5 to 11 and 45% of those 12 to 17. The number dropped to just 12% for adults. A red fox has gone missing from the Toronto Zoo. The facility says Todd escaped his enclosure last month and hasn't been seen since. The red fox was found last year in Milton and the zoo says it was likely raised by people before that. Anyone who lives nearby is asked to call the zoo if they notice a fox acting a little strange. The Daily Bread Food Bank is hosting its annual Thanksgiving drive through food drive today. People are being asked to drop off non-perishable food items at Daily Bread's warehouse at 191 New Toronto Street in Etobicoke between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Daily Bread says it's hoping to collect more than 13,000 kilograms of food, which will be distributed to members of the community who are in need. Other food banks across the GTA also say they're in need of donations now more than ever. I think for many of us during the pandemic, we had questions about whether we would be able to find what we needed at the grocery store, whether it would be the price we expected, uh, how long we'd have to stand in line. And it had a lot of anxiety, but for people experiencing poverty um, and hunger, those are the kind of questions they have about going to the grocery store. Can I get what I need every time they go? So seeing that increase um, in need of food in our community, um, we now have up over 20,000 individuals just in the city of Mississauga using their food banks regularly. We've been lucky, just like uh, Megan has uh, indicated in her community, we've been very lucky with the support we've had as well uh, from our community partners and, and, and business partners. Uh, but we, the need is year-round and it has increased. So we've had to work with those partners really closely uh, to try and uh, make sure that the increase in support we've received over the last several months uh, and year uh, ha is going to continue. So So that we can continue to meet the demand uh, beyond this calendar year and beyond this season. A study spearheaded by Second Harvest found there are over 61,000 community organizations across the country providing food and meals for families who can't afford to feed themselves. It is 712, sitting at 18 degrees. This is Toronto's breaking news. CP24, a U.S. federal appeals court, has temporarily allowed Texas to reinstate its ban on nearly all abortions. We'll have those details coming up. I am getting a vibe. You getting a vibe? Big time vibe. We got a sniper. Get your hands up. I was halfway out the window. Lucy had to pull me back. Mm-hmm. Think anyone's in there? How many do you show us your hands? Get into the rookie, all new. Sunday at 10 8 Mountain, only on CTV. Then stream anytime on CTV.ca and the CTV app.
80% of men with erectile dysfunction have a physical condition and not a psychological one. Revita Medical will improve your love life, confidence, and performance. Revive your life and get Revita today. Go to GetRevita.ca. is borrowing against the equity in your home can be expensive. The ads talk about low rates, but the high costs make them far from cheap. New Borrow makes it simple to borrow the money you need using the equity in your home so you can renovate, invest, or pay off debt. Isn't it time you were in control of your home equity? Make the switch to New Borrow. Use your home to get a loan. Read hundreds of five-star reviews and start saving today at newborrow.com. A U.S. federal appeals court has temporarily allowed Texas to reinstate its ban on nearly all abortions. The decision comes just one day after a lower court suspended the controversial abortion bill in Texas. The appeals court granted an emergency order to put the country's toughest abortion law back into place pending a review of the state's appeal. Senate Bill 8 prohibits abortions in Texas after six weeks before some women even know they are pregnant. U.S. representatives are set to meet with senior Taliban members. It will be the first time such a meeting has happened since American troops withdrew from Afghanistan in August before the country's subsequent fall to the insurgents. Officials say talks in Qatar today and tomorrow will focus on containing extremist groups in Afghanistan as well as an easing uh, of the removal of foreign citizens and Afghans from the country. U.S. Coast Guard investigators say a cracked pipeline that has spilled nearly 500,000 liters of crude oil into the ocean along the coast of Southern California may have been struck multiple times by ship anchors. Officials say it's possible other anchors hit the steel pipe that brings oil to shore from three platforms at sea. While the spill was only discovered last week, it's unknown when the 33-centimeter long crack began leaking oil. Investigators are set to go over a year of data on ship movements near the area of that break. Hundreds of flights have been cancelled out of China because of Typhoon Lion Rock. The 17th typhoon of the season has made landfall in China's Hainan province last night, bringing with it strong winds and heavy rain. Before even making landfall, the typhoon flooded rivers in some low-lying areas of the province, leading to the rescue of two people. Local authorities have issued an emergency response as a result. The volcano on the island of La Palma in the Canary Islands continues to spew lava nearly three weeks after it first erupted. Officials say the molten rock from the crater is now flowing down a lava tube created earlier by hardened lava. It headed straight into the sea. The lava tube has eased fears it could spread wider and trigger further destruction. Prompt evacuation orders on the island helped avoid casualties from the volcano's eruption. 